BT-7 is likely one of your first steps in Soviet tech tree. It is very much like reserve BT-5 with little more protection. It will let you feel the first signs of Stalinium armor, stopping less penetrating shells from relatively thin but very well angled side plates in front. Everywhere else, tanks still can be penetrated easily by anything except machine guns, and it would be a straight downgrade if agility were decreased in exchange for tiny chance to stop incoming fire. Fortunately, to compensate increased mass, the tank has more powerful engine and the mobility feels pretty much at the same level as its predecessor. Forward speed of 54 km per hour is reached very fast, making it one of the fastest vehicles that are easily available for every new starter. Backwards mobility is also higher. 10 km per hour, that is enough to hide behind cover quickly if need arises. And despite you would expect slow turning speed for such long vehicle, but actually it is totally acceptable, quite similar to most of the tanks you will meet in battles. Turret rotation speed is good, capped at 16 degrees per second, but gun's depression is only minus 6, so no hull down for you while other nations will take advantage of that playstyle often. This is a common weakness of almost every Soviet tank that will lead you across all tiers. So you should start to pay more attention to surface below your tracks. Three crew members means that sometimes you will be able to survive if enemy shell hits the turret and kills one of them. But whenever you are hit frontally, shell usually kills the driver and one additional crew member behind him, resulting in instant death. On average, your opponents will have more crew, giving them more chances to survive your hits. And to hit them, you have two options. Solid armor piercing shell with up to 73 mm of penetration and APHE shell with a tiny bit less of penetration but with ballistic cap meaning that it doesn't lose penetration so quickly over distance and additionally containing 32 grams of TNT equivalent of explosives. And the shell with explosive filler is something that Soviets are famous for. With increased post penetration damage, it is best choice for most of the encounters. Reload speed with aced crew is 2.9 seconds. It is something average at these battle ratings. Every opponent with similar caliber cannon will reload at similar speeds. And the small caliber coaxial machine gun might help you to deal with trucks when 3 seconds reload feels too long. Arcade will greet you with absolute chaos. It is the game mode where most of the new players will start to learn the game, so here will be no order and situation will change unpredictably every minute. It is very difficult to plan an attack in such conditions as too many random actions happen. One minute your team captures point, few moments later everyone is at different sides of the map fighting their own battles. The most crowded areas will be complete mess with tanks from both sides rushing forward and sending shells every few seconds in all directions. To regain some control over the battlefield, stay away from such areas. Use your speed to move from cover to cover, starting from calm part of the map and moving towards where the action happens, engaging busy enemies rather than being in a mess yourself. If you are surrounded, just stay covered and let the enemies come to you. Most of them will be impatient and will rush in front of you, shooting on the move and most likely missing the first shot. And the first hit is very important for tanks with small reload times. Whoever disables gunner first usually wins the battle, because the time it takes to replace the gunner is enough for the attacker to reload and shoot at least twice. In realistic, the speed difference between you and everyone else will be very noticeable. And since taking advantage of high speed requires some experience, compared to pure armor thickness or penetration, this machine feels like it's designed to stomp new players. Everyone will be rushing towards the capture point, and they expect to meet opponents here. Plus, low tier tanks fight only on small maps. 
and you'll get situation when in just a matter of seconds you can get across the whole map unnoticed behind unaware opponents. Which, what a surprise, are all light tanks that can be penetrated almost anywhere. On the contrary, BT-7 is quite long, which makes it easier to notice and bigger target to hit. Not every rock will be enough to fully hide, and limited guns depression will force you to stay away from hills, leaving you with even less cover options. Additionally, fuel tanks are literally surrounding the whole engine, so you cannot expect anything less than being on fire more than usual. Despite that, if you know how to exploit mobility, most of the time you will already be in position, prepared to meet opponents. That means that you will have the first shot, which usually defines who wins the encounter. Overall, BT-7 is easily killable vehicle, but it stands out with mobility that may offer some tactical choices that other nations simply don't have.